Let's take a look at building an animated sidebar with some of my favorite technologies, React and Tailwind CSS. What's up everyone. If you're new to the channel, my name is James Q quick and I do weekly videos on web development related topics. I do a lot of JavaScript and VS code, and I do a lot of react. And in this video, we're going to combine rat react, not react and tailwind CSS to build a pretty basic animated, uh, sidebar for your application. Now this is uh, basically a video version of an article that came from Avnish, who uh, has a blog uh, at, uh, I'll include the link below so you can check it out. Uh, so I'm basically just gonna kind of walk through this. This is collaboration with him. So make sure to check out his content. He does uh, like daily, I feel like blogs that are really, really awesome. So go and check him out. And in the meantime, we will go ahead and get started. So the first thing we'll need um, inside of VS Code here is to actually uh, create a new React app. Um, notice I have fig that's giving me some IntelliSense in here, uh, which is really cool. Uh, so I want to do npx create react app. I don't know why I didn't actually pick up create react app. That's interesting. Uh, and we'll call this animated side bar. And after that finishes, uh, we will go, yeah, you can go ahead and install that. Uh, we'll go and actually open this and then we'll uh, set up tailwind CSS inside of it as well. So I'll give this a second. We'll come back and we'll work on it. All right, that is finished. Although I feel like it took longer than it should. If you'd like to know how to set this up with Vite, which would be much faster, let me know in the comments below and I'll do a video on that. Uh, so let's go ahead and open uh, this inside of VS Code. So I'm gonna use this code-r and then the folder. Uh, what the dash r will do is go ahead and reuse the window that I'm currently in. So it'll just open it right here. And then uh, we're gonna need to install several packages for Tailwind to work. Uh, so these are gonna be dev dependencies. So we can do npm install-d. And we'll need uh, Tailwind CSS, we'll need Post CSS, and then we'll need Auto Prefixer. And this is a fairly standard uh, setup for using Tailwind CSS, uh, but we'll need those three packages. And then uh, once we have uh, once we have those set up, now we can run uh, Tailwind CSS init uh, dash p. And what this will do is it will go ahead and create this Tailwind config file and our Post CSS config file as well. So inside of our Tailwind uh, config, we can uh, say we want to pay attention to uh, these type of files. So anything that's in the source directory, I just pasted this in, anything that's in the source directory and then uh, has a suffix or a file extension of JS, JSX, TS, or TSX, depending on how you configure uh, your React applications. And then inside of our index CSS, I'm gonna get rid of all the default styling here. And we'll add in our uh, kind of base Tailwind component. So it's uh, Tailwind base, and then it is Tailwind components. And then uh, lastly, it is uh, utilities. All right, hopefully all of those are spelled right. And what we should see is inside of our index.js, it pulls in this index.css, which should then have a setup for Tailwind. So to uh, test this out, let's go ahead and do an npm run start. This will hopefully interesting we'll provide access to documents interesting i guess so yeah but this should pull this open and actually pull it open on the wrong tab so let me open it up inside of here so here's our basic react app and uh, we're going to need to kind of strip out the stuff that is here so uh, in this index we'll leave the index alone but we'll go to the app js file and let's minimize this a bit and we'll just kind of get rid of uh, everything in here for now. Actually, I guess we, we don't technically have to. We could just leave this and have our sidebar be on top of that. So we can do that. Uh, and then let's go into our source and let's add a new directory for components. And we're going to create a sidebar, sidebar uh, JS component. I've got snippets in here for uh, stubbing out a React functional component. So RFC there uh, now creates this functional component for us. Uh, with just blank div in between. So uh, we want to now use our Tailwind classes to style this thing. So let's uh, create an H2 in here and let's just say this is the sidebar. Now, obviously you can add as much or as little content in there as you want. Uh, and then we'll start to stub out these classes. Make sure you do class name instead of uh, class. And let's see that. So uh, actually the first thing we should do is make sure that Tailwind is actually being uh, loaded in here correctly. And one of the things that we can do to help with that is get rid of all of the styles inside of app CSS. 
So let's just make sure that stuff is gone. Uh, this looks pretty boring as is, and maybe that's a reason for us to come into our app.js and go ahead and remove all of the stuff that's here. So let's uh, remove all that stuff and then we'll have an H1 that says uh, main content or something like that, it doesn't really matter. So there's our main content, it's up there, it's really small. Um, so if we wanted to make this a little bit bigger, we could have class name and then we start to use our tail one classes of text uh, for XL and text center, I believe. We'll go ahead and center that text. Uh, and then uh, for our app, we can add some class names up here as well. So we can have uh, MX auto to center everything if we wanted to. We could have uh, margin top of eight to give ourselves a margin up there. And uh, okay, this is pretty basic, but that's gonna be our main content. And we can tell that Tailwind is working. Tell that Tailwind is working. Cool, so let's go back to our sidebar. And actually, let's go ahead and render this sidebar inside of our app. So let's go ahead and get a reference to this. Uh, it should get auto imports in here. And we can just uh, stub out that uh, using that sidebar. And it should just say, this is the sidebar. And then there's our main content. So that's what we wanna go and work on. All right, so let's go back into our sidebar. And we want this to be uh, absolutely positioned. So to do that, we can do that with top uh, dash zero and then right dash zero. And this should go ahead and make this thing be absolutely positioned. Actually, not quite. We want this to be fixed position. So we need to add a class of fixed as well. So this will make sure that this is gonna be in the top right corner. So if we go and look at this, see that it's moved over here. And then if we added uh, some background of BG blue, uh, 400, let's say 500, I accidentally typed in. There's our actual sidebar. So a couple of things we need to fix. We need to have a width of something and we can, what's the biggest width we can get in here? Biggest width is 2024. So let's see what that looks like. Uh, that's not very big. Can we get much bigger than that? Let's see. Is there a hundred for width? I have no idea, I'm just kind of trying out stuff. Doesn't look like there is. Uh, one of the things we can do though, is we can interpolate inside of here with newer versions of Tailwind, is we can interp interpolate values inside of uh, inside of these brackets. So this W now and then 35 view width allows us to use those viewport elements, which should make this thing a lot bigger, which is what we want. Uh, we also want our height to be uh, full. So we'll do H full to make this thing go the full height. And now we're starting to get uh, much closer to what, we, uh, what we're what we looking for. We can also add padding of 10 in here just to space that stuff out. And that's actually uh, looking pretty good. And then the content that's inside of it, uh, we can add for uh, the H2, we can add a text of 2XL and we can add a text white. And that's uh, like we could do a bunch of different things, but that's probably about all we want. So now we actually want to start to uh, enable the toggling of this. So we're gonna use a uh, use state in here. And I've got a little bit of uh, auto import there and then uh, a little function. I think this would give me a little snippet. It's not working. This one, there we go. Uh, so we're gonna keep track of the uh, show and hide of the sidebar. So um, I can say, I'm gonna call this like is, is open. I like doing the, the is. Uh, and we'll set this to false initially. So we've got our piece of state for is open. And then we're gonna need some way to actually uh, toggle this thing and actually show uh, that we want to either show or hide it. So uh, what we'll do, we'll wrap this thing in empty div tags or empty tags here. Uh, and then we'll go to conditionally render this thing. So we will say um, if there, uh, if uh, not show sidebar, but is open, uh, and we'll start with the not version of this. If it is not open, then I don't need react. Uh, we'll do a ternary here. So if it's not open, we will uh, just for now, we can have uh, a P tag that says not open. And then um, if, and we'll put these inside of parentheses like that. And then the opposite of that uh, is with uh, after that colon, I'll come back and kind of rephrase this all in a second. So let's make sure that uh, this is rendering appropriately. I think this goes down here and this goes after it. Hopefully that's right. So uh, let's take a look at this now that we've actually got it in here and get rid of this extra line and maybe tab this in one more time. So 
if this is not open, we'll just uh, show this text. We'll show a hamburger button in a second. And then the opposite of that, if it is open, we'll go ahead and actually show the sidebar. So if we uh, run this now, we should see it says not open and it's on the left because it doesn't have all that styling. And then if we were to change this now to true, uh, this should be our full sidebar on the right. So we're starting to get the right thing. So what we actually want instead of this P tag is a button and uh, we'll end up copying in a little bit of SVGs for this, uh, but we'll have this button and and inside of that button, if it's not open, I'm gonna copy in uh, this SVG here that Abniche has provided. Uh, if you wanna copy that source code, it's inside of the, um, in the article that he published. Uh, so let's tab this over a lot and format this a bit. I guess we'll actually need to take everything in one more. And then we'll want to call not set show bar, but set is open. So the opposite of is open. All right, so uh, let's get a little more room on the page here. So if it's open, or if, excuse me, if it's not open, we wanna show this button that uses some SVGs for those hamburger lines. Uh, and if you click on, let's say not the SVG directly, but the button directly, you click on it, we're gonna to toggle that uh, is open. So let's start with uh, false up here so it won't be open we will now click on this button and it should show the sidebar but now we don't have a button to actually close the sidebar so now in addition to this content up here we'll want to add this x uh, that we can do the opposite of this so inside of here we'll have another button and uh, this one we'll just say this will just have an x on here and then we'll add some classes to uh, this one so we can say uh, the text is going to be, I don't know, XL or something. Uh, text will be white. And let's just see what that looks like to start. I think that will put this over here on the right. So we actually want this thing to be uh, potentially absolutely positioned as well. So we can add fixed. And then instead of uh, top, uh, top zero and right zero, we can do like top four and right four. This should put this that thing right at the top, uh, top right up here. It doesn't look super good, but it it'll actually do exactly what we need it to. And uh, with that, now we'll add our on click, and we'll do this the same way we just did a second ago, where we will uh, call the. Let's see, we'll call set is open with the opposite of is open. So this will allow us to toggle this thing once we add this in there. So now let's see, we have our X here, we can close that, we have our hamburger, and now it's opening and closing. And the only thing we're missing is the actual animated version of that. So let's go ahead and add that now. So to do that, we wanna conditionally add some classes uh, inside of our JavaScript to, the, uh, to this thing over here. So let's, uh, let's take a look where basically what we want to do is we want to translate this thing on the X value all the way uh, off the screen. That way we can translate it back to uh, where it should be and then run animations on that. And translations are uh, optimized for animations. So we can uh, say now we're going to change, change this to um, JavaScript and we'll change this to ES6 template literal string like so. And now inside of here, we want to conditionally add some classes. So inside of our uh, dollar sign curly brackets, now we can check uh, if it is open. So if is open, uh, what class do we want to add? Well, we want to add the translate X of zero. If it's not open, we want to add uh, something else. We want to add the translate dash X dash full. So what this is saying is we're gonna conditionally add one of these classes. If uh, it should be open, we wanna set translate X to zero, which will put it where it naturally should be. Otherwise, we will translate it off, uh, basically off the screen. So now let's see if we're able, uh, we probably won't actually see a difference here uh, because we now need to add the animation. So now let's go ahead and actually add those, the animation here on this element. So these classes are going to be uh, ease in out, for the ease type of the animation. And then we'll say duration is 300. All right, now let's actually see uh, what this looks like. So uh, this I thought would slide in, but it is not. Let's go and check on that.
Uh, well, we've got our duration is misspelled. So that's definitely part of it. And now if we run it, still nothing. And I think we're having an issue because uh, right now we're conditionally rendering this, uh, this thing over here. We actually want that thing to stay. So the thing we want to conditionally render is uh, the different, the button and the other button. So let's move, let's move all of this outside of the condition. So let's move it down here. So this thing will always be there, except you won't see it because by default, it will have that class of the transition. That didn't work the way I wanted it to. Uh, I'll leave the formatting as it is, but because it has this translate X full, it'll be off the screen and we won't see it. So now let's move our button up here. All right, so move that button up there and then I will just show the nav bar uh, or the sidebar at all times, but because of the uh, translate X uh, full and zero, it should now animate on and off. So you see this thing comes on and now the problem is that our button maybe isn't visible up here with the X. So I think we probably have a Z index on here, Z index of five. So if we set a Z index to get that on top, I think we'll have that uh, ready to go. So let's look at our uh, Z, I don't even know what Z10, that'll work. Uh, so this should be on, we can open and close this thing, which is nice. Now the only other thing you're seeing is that we have this jump in content over here. Uh, and I probably don't want that. So we probably want this nav bar just to kind of come right in. And I think that's coming from adding in our button there. So let's go take a look and see if we can prevent that jumping as we animate the sidebar in. All right, so looking at our code again, I think what we need to do is apply these classes to our button parent of the SVG. So let's add these uh, to our button and get rid of it from the SVG. That way this thing is actually fixed up here uh, and it's not an SVG that's fixed to the button itself. Uh, so now the sidebar should come in and out uh, pretty easily. And then the animation of this is really nice. So Tailwind gives you all these tools, uh, which is really just beautiful to be able to set this stuff up uh, without a whole lot of work. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to go and check out the article from Abnish and all the other articles that he has. I like doing video versions of his stuff because he does such a good job makes it easier for me to create content and I get to help uh, share the cool stuff that he does. So if you'd like to see any other, um, you know, basic, how do you build certain components with Tailwind CSS and React or in Svelte or something else, let me know what kind of stuff you'd like to see uh, with a comment below. Thanks as always for checking out the video and I'll catch you next time.